As free agency inches closer and closer, the Jays are getting closer to having to make a massive decision surrounding Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and his contract in Toronto. And a new report from an insider has revealed some very interesting information and details surrounding this. So to break that down, as well as discuss three players that won't return to the Toronto Blue Jays if they decide to break the bank for Vladdy. So stay tuned for all that in this episode. But before we get into it, quick reminder to hit that like button. Let's try to get 150 likes on this video. I mean, the world, if you guys can help us hit that goal. If you're enjoying the daily videos, make sure to smash that like button. But let's dive right into it. A lot to go over today, but let's start with a new report. So Blue Jays Insider believes it might be now or never for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. contract extension. And as we know, obviously the World Series right now are getting underway in a couple days between the Yankees and the Dodgers. And the Blue Jays are at an interesting point in their offseason here obviously they can't they're not going to extend vladdy yet for agency hasn't opened up but they're getting very close to the point where they're going to have to make some big decisions surrounding vladimir Guerrero jr and others amidst what's going to be one of the most important free agency periods for the toronto blue jays in the past handful of seasons and the article basically goes on to say and it's surrounding keegan matheson the notable uh, notable blue jays insider and reporter the clock is ticking for the Jays to extend Vladdy. Let's focus on the when here. It's already clear to anyone with eyeballs that the Blue Jays should do everything possible to keep Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in Toronto, but the timing matters. To me, it either has to happen this offseason or it will turn into a situation that stretches into Guerrero's free agency. And as we all know, he's on the last year of his contract, which means that if they fail to get a deal done this offseason and they're going into next season with a huge with big weights on their shoulders because if they go out and let's say they have a horrible season, they're then going to have to compete with every other team in baseball who wants to compete for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. services. And he is coming off of the second best season of his career aside from 2021. And it is now or never for the Toronto Blue Jays. If they fail to get something done this offseason, they're going to be looking at this as a huge decision going forward. They're going to look at this as a huge decision for the foreseeable future. And if they don't extend him, what is next for the Toronto Blue Jays? And Keegan Matheson believes an extension has to come now and that the clock is ticking. With this in mind, Blue Jays fans should be concerned if the deal is not reached this offseason. Assuming he plays well, his price will only go up. And again, like I mentioned, if they fail to extend him this offseason, they're going to be in for a very interesting handful of, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of teams, more than a handful of teams who are very interested in Vladdy's services and will be willing to pay a ton of money for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And will they be able to win a bidding war when over the past handful of seasons, they could have just got the man himself. And you see here, even if they do outbid the field, will Guerrero choose to resign in Toronto if they have another down year over a different team that might be better positioned to win? And that's the thing. If they have a down year next year, all signs are going to point to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Potentially, again, he's made it clear he wants to stay in Toronto, but if they have another down year and they don't make the playoffs again, it's going to be very hard to convince Vladimir Guerrero Jr. amidst other teams that are going to be interested in the services to resign with the Blue Jays. And the article basically goes on to say that the Jays are in a difficult spot here. Their roster, as of this writing, is not close enough to compete for a postseason spot. And if not, as they're flush with their high-end prospects, despite that, they've shown no desire to even consider a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. trade, yet have not appeared to be close to agreeing on terms and an extension. And that's what the point of this is, this video is, is that they're in no man's land right now. They haven't gotten close, at least according to reports, to an extension. They do not want to trade Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So at this point, they're kind of just in the middle. Of course, they're going to wait some things out. But if they go ahead and extend Vladdy as soon as possible, that will help them. It won't do anything. There's no negatives to extending Vladimir Guerrero Jr. right now. Obviously, it's going to cost a ton of money. But if they go ahead and extend him, that might pursue and lure other free agents to Toronto, whether that's the big fish like Juan Soto, whether that's guys like Alex Bregman, Pete Alonso, via trades, things like that. Bringing guys into the Blue Jays clubhouse, knowing that they have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. locked up for the next decade, would be a lot more comforting than some free agents willing to sign in Toronto, not knowing what their future holds beyond this year. Because they want to sign guys like Bregman or Juan Soto to huge deals, four or five years, in Soto's case, 10 years, 14 years, whatever it ends up being. They're going to want to do that. The guys are not going to, not going to want to sign if they don't know what the team's going to look like after next year. Because there's a world where Vladdy and Bo somehow both walk next year. I don't think that's really a realistic case scenario at all, but it could happen. And if you're other free agents from the outside looking in, I think the thing you're going to want to do is get Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You're, you're going to want to get Vladimir Guerrero Jr. signed if you are the front office, and other teams are going to want to do that as well. So just a bit of an interesting piece here, but let's move on now to another interesting piece, which is surrounding, of course, the players that will be gone if they break the bank for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So three Toronto Blue Jays who won't be back if they break the bank for Vladdy. Locking up Guerrero for the long haul is probably already number one for Ross Atkins this offseason, but it will come at a cost. So 
this is an interesting piece here. So it basically dives into players that won't return if they decide to extend Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And I'm assuming, obviously, they're, of course, are talking about returning after next season. So number one would be Chris Bassett. And this one's kind of obvious. I mean, I don't think this one has necessarily everything to do with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. per se. I think it's more so to do with just the fact that he's 35 years old and is aging. Um, it's a bit surprising to see Bassett stick around past the deadline this year, showing real signs of decline, which uh, not really, but a little bit of decline. The Jays want to make a run at someone like Soto in the free agency market. In addition to paying Vladdy, getting Bass's $22 million off the books would be helpful. This is a super interesting one because if you look at it from an outsider's perspective, if they decide to trade Chris Bassett, it would open up a lot of space for guys like Juan Soto or guys, whoever else you want to get, Alex Bregman. But I also don't think that they're pinching pennies at this point. And I don't know if they're going to need to dump a guy like Chris Bassett, who's still a serviceable starter in this league, just to make room for some of these other free agents. But if they do decide that they need to cut some salary, I can see why Chris Bassett could be a name there. Number two on this list is outfielder George Springer. Speaking of pricey players who aren't earning their paychecks anymore, of course, Springer was rough last year. And the article basically goes on to say that if Toronto packages him with something a bit more enticing, maybe the team can find a deal and free up some more payroll space. So this article is under the assumption that they need to free up payroll space to sign a lot of these guys. And that's not necessarily the case. There's obviously no cap in baseball. There is the luxury tax, however. So depending how far below the luxury tax or whether they're willing to go into the luxury tax, they want to stay. will tell a lot about what they decide to do with these guys. But I don't see a world where any team takes on George Springer at this point. It's one of the worst contracts in baseball, unfortunately. But... Um, he can still be a serviceable player, so I think they're going to decide to keep George Springer regardless. I could see them maybe trying to move Chris Bassett if they're really trying to get off at $22 million, but Chris Bassett, the team starting rotation right now, bearing any other trades or signings, is still looking pretty good, but also a little bit bleak, especially if they get rid of Chris Bassett. I mean, you have guys like Kevin Gosman, Jose Brios, Chris Bassett, like those are your main three. I don't know how deep it looks beyond that if they decide to get rid of Chris Bassett. So I don't know how I feel about getting rid of him, but George Springer, I don't think any team is going to take him on. And here's the big one here out of this is Bo Bichette. And again, according to reports, Atkins hasn't ruled out possibility of re-signing both, but it's hard to believe the team can afford both if they want to go in a different direction. Maybe Atkins wants to hold on to him until at least the deadline to see how good the team is for 2025 and give Bichette a chance to rebuild his value. But that also comes with risk. Teams figure to be far less willing to shell out to acquire half a season of Bichette ahead of his free agency than a full year. Either way, a Guerrero deal would officially start the clock on Bichette's time in Toronto. I don't know if I completely agree with that, but at the same time, I do think Bo Bichette's time in Toronto is coming to an end because of a few different things. Obviously, they haven't seen success with him. I don't know how much he wants to be in Toronto. He has said he wouldn't. He wants to stay and win alongside Vladdy, but they're actually going to have to go ahead and do that. And it's going to be a very interesting discussion. But let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Obviously, a lot of news here surrounding Vladdy, surrounding Bo Bichette, and their futures in Toronto. And as the offseason gets underway... There's going to be a lot of conversation and dialogue about what the future holds for this team. And we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon.